Hi, this is Ms. McCahan, and we're going to talk about translations today. Translation is just one type of transformation. And remember, a transformation is just any change in the position or size of a figure. And when we do any kind of transformation, it creates a new figure called the image. The original figure is called the pre-image. So specifically, a translation is a transformation that moves all the points in the figure in the same distance and the same direction. And we consider a translation an isometry. This is a word you need to know. And all that means is that it keeps the same lengths and angles. So for example, in this diagram, the triangle is our original figure, triangle ABC, and that, that would be called the pre-image. And this is the image. This is the new figure. Do you notice that A, B, and C all have apostrophes all the, on them? That's called prime. So this would be called A prime, B prime, C prime. So all I did was move, translate this triangle to this new image, and that's called a translation. Do you notice that all of the side lengths are the same and all of the angles are the same? We didn't change the size or the shape. We just moved it around. So for example, if I wanted to translate this triangle four units to the left, I would simply count four units to the left for each point. So here's T, and I would count one, two, three, four, and that would be where the new T point is. Same thing with K. I would count one, two, three, four. That's where the new K would be. And then R, one, two, three, four. So you see how all of those points just got moved to the left four. And that's where my new triangle would be. Now if I wanted to do five units down, I would do the same thing. I would just count five units down, and all of those points would end up right there. This would be five units down. And then three units to the right, two units down. So you could do a combination of both left, right, and up and down. So if I go three to the right, one, two, three and then down to one, two, I would end up there. So you can describe these translations using arrow notation. And all that means is that this is my pre-image A. It started at three comma one, and it ended up here at uh, the image A prime, two comma three. And that arrow just means it went from here to here. So in general, we can describe a translation using that arrow notation. So if I do that with K, K, this, this point right here, this is the pre-image because it doesn't have an apostrophe. That would start at negative 8, negative 4. And I would draw the arrow to the prime figure right here, and that's at point 3, 2. So when we're writing a rule for translation, one way to do that is simply just to find that horizontal change. And remember, moving right as a positive number and left as a negative, just like the x-axis. And then vertical change, moving up as positive and moving down as negative. So we're going to start with x comma y, draw our arrow, and then in the over here, we're going to show how much x and y changed. Here's an example. So this is my pre-image, the red triangle, ABC. And we're going to show how that moved to the blue triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime. So every point moved five spaces to the left and three spaces up. So the rule that we wrote is we wrote x comma y with an arrow and then showed that all of the x coordinates moved, shifted left five. So that's why we wrote minus five and then up three. So if I wanted to describe this one, again, here's my pre-image, here's the new image. So do you notice that if I look at B, this is moving to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So when I write my, my rule, I'm gonna write X plus six. And then this also moved down to one, two. So I'm gonna write Y minus two. And here's how that rule would look. And we can also use what we call vector notation. So let's talk about vectors for a minute. 
what is a vector? All that is is a directed line segment. So a vector has magnitude, that's just a fancy word for length, and it has direction. So notice all these small little arrows, they might all be the same length, but they are pointing different directions. So those are considered all different vectors. So the parts of the vector that we need to pay attention to, we've got the initial point and the terminal point. Sometimes it's called the tail and the head. So the initial point is simply the dot part and the terminal point is the arrow. Where did it end up? Where did it start? Where did it end? And then we're going to use the different components of the vector to help uh, write the vector in component form. So if I start from the initial point and count how far over horizontally I went, that is called the X component, the horizontal components. And then if I count upwards, then that will tell me the vertical component or the Y component. And when we write vectors, we use these pointy brackets. So you can see these pointy brackets here. So this is the general form. Let's do a specific example. So if I wanted to write this in component form, I would count how far did I go from the starting point to the ending point. So first the X component. So how far horizontally that is. Went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I would put 8 in that first spot for my X component and then down one, two. So that would be a negative two for my y component. So you can see it kind of looks like uh, x and y coordinates except we have pointy brackets and that's to indicate that we are dealing with a vector here. So this is that whole arrow. So let's do this again. Here's another vector. I need a count starting from my initial point. That's the dot. So I have to count to the right. One, two, three, four and then up three, one, two, three. So I'd have pointy brackets, four comma three. So if I don't have the vector graph and I just am given two points, the initial point and the terminal point, I can still label it in component form. All I'm going to do is subtract the terminal, terminal components minus the initial components. So all that means is if I have the terminal point, that's the T part, if I have the X and Y coordinates of the T part and the X and Y components of the I part, the initial point, then all I'm going to do is subtract the T minus the I. So that's going to give me a vector of the X component, so the X coordinates subtracted and the Y components subtracted. So again, let's do an example. So if I wanted to find the component form, and it, this vector started at negative 4, 3, and it terminated at 8, negative 7, again, I have, to, I have to subtract the terminating minus the initial. So here's where it ended, so i got to start with 8. So let's look at the x components now. So I'm just looking at 8 and negative 4. I have to do 8 minus a negative 4. So remember, 8 minus a negative 4, that's going to give me positive 12. And you see I'm going to use the pointy brackets and my x component is positive 12. And then if I subtract, again, the terminal minus the initial, so negative 7 minus 3, those are the y components. Negative 7 minus 3 gives me negative 10. And that's how you can write it in vector form. So you've got two different forms of writing a translation.